Ooh, need to clean off my lens a bit. Look at that. All kinds of smudges. Talk about lens care. That's gonna need some solvent. I'll fix it later. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. A while back, I made a video entitled Fantastic Reaper Themes and Where to Find Them. To date, it's one of my most watched videos, which suggests that people have a definite interest in changing the look and feel of Reaper. While I do have a handful of themes that are my personal favorites, I do tend to find myself consistently crawling back to the stock theme because it just works. There's a theme called Smooth 6 that a lot of people loved, but I just couldn't get along with. For whatever reason, I couldn't get the fonts to render properly on my system, and a lot of the graphical elements didn't seem to work out too well with my DPI scaling on my machine. I'm currently running a Windows system with two 27-inch monitors, both at 4K and 150% scaling. Some themes support 100, 150, and 200% scaling, and others just don't. So as I said, I've been using the stock theme for a pretty good while, with perhaps a few minor modifications. Earlier this week, Alejandro from Reaper Tips released his own theme. Okay, that's it for now. I really enjoy making this kind of video, so thank you for your support. Now, he was a big proponent of Smooth 6, and made several modifications to that theme to suit his own needs. And while he wanted to be able to release his modification of Smooth 6, the developer for that theme seems to have disappeared, and the license for his theme suggests that you can't repackage and redistribute it. So with that said, over a period of weeks, possibly months, Alejandro began painstakingly working on his own theme based on the Reaper 6 stock theme. I've been test driving it for the past couple of days and I have to say it's become my new favorite theme. Since it's based on the Reaper stock theme, we know that we don't have any compatibility issues. And being a graphic designer, Alejandro is known for his attention to detail. Let's take a look. What you're currently looking at is the Reaper 6 stock theme. As I said in the introduction, I'm running 4K resolution at 150% scaling, and every element of this theme looks crisp and clean. I've already installed the theme, so I'll go to Options, Themes, and Reaper Tips Theme TCP Right Side Effects. And upon changing to the Reaper Tips theme, my display has instantly become smoother. That's the only words that I can use to describe it. I definitely like the more rounded faders in the mixer, and the appearance of the effects slots is nice as well. The blue accents for the toggled on buttons in the toolbar really help them to stand out. And while the theme is not drastically different from the Reaper 6 default theme, at the same time it is, but in a good way. There's nothing that's too distracting that takes away from my workflow, and if anything, it enhances my workflow. I would dare say that the theme even makes things sound better. Of course I'm kidding about that, but it does make for a very pleasant mixing experience. I know that we should mix with our ears and not our eyes, but this theme significantly increases the visual appeal of Reaper and makes me want to use it even more. And going back to the previous comment about Alejandro's attention to detail, he's even included a PDF going into great detail about all the aspects of the theme. Let's take a look. Installation is just as easy as any other Reaper theme, and if you like the theme, I definitely recommend you donating to Alejandro through his Buy Me A Coffee link. That link is available in the PDF as well as on the Reaper Tips website. Scrolling down past the introduction, we have the installation section, and if we take a look at the folder where I've extracted the Reaper theme, we can see I've got the Quick Start Guide, the Theme Folder, and an Extras Folder. Inside the Theme Folder, we have two different folders depending on your architecture, either Windows or Mac. And if we look back at the PDF, there is a note that if you install the Mac version, to be sure to install the included fonts first. For each operating system, there's two different versions of the theme included. There's the Normal version, and then there's the TCP Right Side Effects version, which is the one that I have installed. As it shows in the PDF, the TCP right side version has the effects inserts on the right side of the track control panel. I'll bring Reaper back up, and we can see here for any track that I've got effects on, they're showing up in the right side of the track control panel. My kick track has several different effects on there, so if I go back to the kick track in the track control panel and extend the height, we can see all of my effects on the right side of the control panel, which is a nice touch. Going back to the PDF, we can see that if you prefer the traditional method, you can simply install the normal version instead. To install the theme, simply open up the folder of your choice and double click the theme to install it or drag and drop it onto Reaper. It's really that simple. But if we continue to scroll past the installation page, there's more. Alejandro also includes some recommendations to get the most out of the theme. He shows how to use solid lines instead of dotted lines for the grid for maximum visibility, as well as how to use the theme adjuster to make some additional adjustments to the appearance of the theme. There's the theme tweak action to adjust colors and fonts. And if you're not into the transparent buttons in the track control panel, he also shows an alternative method of having solid buttons instead of the transparent ones. Furthermore, he includes a recommended color palette along with some instructions for Roadie Lab's color palette script. The color palette script allows you to pre-configure some of your favorite colors to easily color your tracks with a single click. I definitely use the word color way too many times in that sentence, but you get the idea. And finally, he goes on to explain the extras folder that's included in the theme. 
The process to use these images is a little bit more complicated than simply installing a theme, but rest assured he goes into plenty of detail to show you how. The instructions show you how to change out the backgrounds on undimmed tracks and items, how to change the TCP volume knobs to gradients, and plenty more. I recommend looking through the PDF at all the different options. There's several more features and items to tweak in this theme to truly make it your own. Be sure to check the link in the description to pick up a copy of Alejandro's Reaper Tips theme for Reaper 6. I also recommend you checking out Reaper Tips right here on YouTube for more tips and tricks with Reaper. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee. I like coffee, but I like choices too. I guess I'm going with choice number two today. Super thanks, or Patreon links below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. And be sure to check out my drum editing and Reaper course on ProMix Academy. We'll see you next time. I swear this theme makes stuff sound better.